And what makes you human is not your physical form. It's your soul. It's not even your spirit body that makes you human. It's actually your soul. So, so the human soul is a unique creation of God. And that is the part of you that I wish you to focus on. Because that is the real you. There will be a time in your life when you don't have a physical form and you don't even have a spirit body form. And in fact, there'll be a time in your life when you'll be able to create hundreds of thousands of bodies that you connect with that express yourself to other people if you wish. Not just one body. Do you follow me? It's like, you, in your existence, in the 22nd sphere location, you can create hundreds of thousands of, of physical forms through which you express yourself. Right? If you want to do that. Many times you choose not to because there's more powerful ways of expressing yourself. But sometimes a physical form is a, 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 an appropriate way to express yourself to someone here on earth when you're in that state. So the key, the key for you to realise is that as you grow, there is just this huge, this huge creations and, and worlds of opportunity open to you that are vastly beyond your own imagination at the moment as to what you could even conceive is possible. And the key, the key to all of that growth is to seek first the kingdom, to, to seek first God's love. Get to that state first because then you will start to understand what's available to you in all other ways. And the way my focus of my, you know, my feelings and my focus is always upon God. And the reason why is that's been the longing of my soul. And what I, what I feel is that firstly God bestowed his love and gave mankind the opportunity to receive his love, to get above the natural love state and into the new, the divine state, if you like. God gave mankind that, that amount of love as a possibility to enter their soul and transform their soul. But there are other qualities of God that I believe God is also going to make available to man once man gets into that 20-second sphere state. And so I believe there's going to be other qualities of God that God's going to bestow upon man that we'll actually experience from God. So rather than imagining it or thinking it, we will be able to actually begin to absorb that quality of God just like now we have the, quality, we have the ability to absorb God's love and transform the soul. So that's my focus, but that is not the focus of all spirits in the spirit world. And, and certainly not the focus of even spirits in the celestial kingdom, which is above the, the eighth sphere. Every single one of you has a unique thing, qualities in your soul. Unique qualities that no other soul ever, ever created or ever who has experienced life has ever had. So every single one of you, as you grow, changes the universe. Do you, do you understand that? As you grow from one location to another location, in the spirit world or even here on earth in terms of love, your entire your growth changes even the physical location. So for example, when I entered the seventh sphere, I was the before the seventh sphere existed, there was only the six spheres, one to six. Then when I got into a condition in the first century where I entered into the seventh sphere, right, what actually happened is that I was the first person to enter the seventh sphere and the seventh sphere created got created because the first person entering it creates the sphere, creates the dimension. Mm -hmm. And then, after that sphere was created, what happened is my personality was reflected in it. Do you follow me? Yeah. And then the next person who entered the seventh sphere location, which was a spirit in the spirit world, when he entered the location, his personality reflected and automatically changed the location to a new place. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then when the third person entered, they their personality changed the location. And, and so the locations themselves are actually changing with each new person entering them. And when, when I entered the first celestial spirit, uh, heavens, when I, I was still on the earth, but in the first celestial, in the, in the condition of abundance, again, my personality was reflected in that new condition of love in that dimension. And then when the next spirit, enter, which was Moses and Elias and different other spirits in the spirit world enter it, their personality changed what I'd created into a mixture of the both of us or the three of us or the five of us or the ten of us or the thousand of us or the hundreds of thousands of us, right? And so in the end, what happens, there's millions and millions of people who have entered that, seven, that eight sphere state now in the spirit world. And the, the, the spirit world it is different now than when I first entered it. 
because it's a reflection of all of those combinations of personalities being reflected in that location. Do you follow me? Yeah. And so every new location gets created in that regard and every new place that as you progress. So when you change from the first to the second sphere here on earth, people in the second sphere in the spirit world know you've entered that condition. And they know because you changed it. You changed their place. You changed their surroundings. Their surroundings are different. A reflection of your personality that, that nobody else has ever had is now added to that, and they feel that. Yeah? It's sort of thing that there's a large number of people who've got um, lower, lower developmental or soul or more soul damage mm -hmm. are entering that sphere that then that will bring the, the um, level down. Well, the, the thing is that each sphere, um, you know, the first of the six spheres, um, each sphere is really, you could think of them as places of, um, what's the word, probation, if you like, um, where people have not yet learnt to love and, and, you know, they're in that location because they need to learn some things about love. And every single location is a place of probation, really. So, so when... When a person enters the sphere, they are automatically entering the location where their soul is already suited for. Right? So they're not bringing it up or bringing it down. They are actually in the location. So these locations now, particularly the, loca the higher locations, would all exist whether you th are there or not now. Because somebody has already entered them and created them. So, you know, let's say all of a sudden something happened on Earth and everyone on Earth got into a first sphere condition there was no one in any other condition that doesn't mean the second sphere would no longer exist because the second sphere has already been created. It's a dimension that's already been created and already exists, whether people live in it or not. What I, what I would like to see happen myself, and one of the reasons why I've returned, is that there's a lovely uh, prophecy in the book of Isaiah which talks about the heavens being rolled up like a book scroll. And I've always interpreted that to mean that as, as the the location here on earth changes in its, um, in, in its spiritual development, that eventually there'll be nobody on earth who passes into the spirit world in the first sphere. Right? And they'll all pass in the second sphere or greater. So that means at that point that the first sphere will no longer need to exist. And I believe, my, my feeling is that when the first sphere no longer needs to exist, it will disappear. So, so it will actually be rolled up, if you like, and, and closed. And then, let's say everyone on Earth gets into a third sphere condition and everyone in the spirit world is above a third sphere condition, then I believe the second sphere will roll up. Right? And so all of these creations of these lower spheres below the six, so the fifth, fourth, third, and second and downwards, will all eventually be rolled up to the sixth. And I believe that in the end, the sixth sphere will probably continue to exist for a long time but the underlying spheres may not exist at all in quite a short time. Which will be beautiful, actually, because the majority of our problems here on Earth are caused by spirits in terrible condition interacting with humans, creating even more terrible conditions. So, yeah. So Do you see a time frame on that? Do you think see a major evolution? Um, there, 2012 will be triggers to a lot of these major evolutions, but, but the actual rolling up, you know, when people get into better conditions, I think that's going to take much longer. I believe in a few hundred years, man is going to be in a state of, like, um, where they'll either be in a sixth sphere state or in a celestial state. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be good.